and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and today we have a wood first impressions which is this lovely wooden ship kit of um, a Chinese pirate ship. Um, I guess like a Chinese junk style ship with cannons. Uh, so quite an interesting subject, something a little bit different. Um, it is 1100 scale and made by uh, Matty. Um, and its kit number is 1421. And on the box, it tells us that it's mu museum quality with high quality materials. Now, for me, Amati are, are one of the um, better makes of wooden ship kits. There's several, and they've all got their own different, unique features. Um, um, but Amati have built up a reputation for good quality kits. So this should be okay. Um, so we have a um, lovely uh, green box with a picture of the completed model and a close-up picture of it there. Um, and inside it's got the same information as the top, but also gives us a little bit more information about the kit here, uh, basically telling you that it's a plank on frame construction, that it's got cannons and cloth for the sails. Now, a lot of kits don't have cloth for the sail, and you've got to buy extra. In this one, they have it. Um, it also says two plans, which means it's probably not an overly complex build. Um, the, both the ends are the same, uh, telling you the same basic information. And then on this side of the box, we have some more pictures. Um, and, um, uh, and basically, it's the health and safety not suitable for certain ages, so on and so forth. So that's the box. Let's have a look inside. The packaging is usually really good. What we've got is a nice double thickness box, the lid being the thinnest part, as is often the case, but that doesn't really matter because we have a nice folded in corrugated cardboard top and cardboard uh, folded corrugated cardboard ends. So we've got lots of uh, strength and rigidity in there. So let's see. We've got a bag here which has got instructions and plans and what looks like, yeah, plywood parts. Then we've got our sails and we've got other parts contained in these um, little containers and then our bundles of wood. So let's start with the instructions. So the kit instructions are made up of one uh, plan, um, which we will have a look at in a moment. Um, a set of instructions for the decals, which we will view and talk about separately. And then this um, instruction booklet, which is A4 and stapled black and white. So let's start with the instruction booklet. So this is the, a slightly older format for a Matty and um, it comes with multiple languages. So um, you have to find a bit that's relevant to your particular language. So in this case, the English bit is in, this, in the section there. And it gives us a little bit of history, it says this is a typical Chinese boat, um, it's got 10 guns and, and so on. And then we have a black and white picture of the finished model. Um, one thing that you'll notice about this particular kit is there is no rat lines on this. Um, there's no um, complex rigging. So it's just basically the uh, ropes that are used to manipulate the um, sails. So um, in terms of rigging, it's a much more simplified model than uh, many uh, wooden ship kits. So this is probably not too bad for a novice, I would imagine. Then as we open it up, what you can see is we get a nice big clear picture of what's going on and a little bit of description. Um, these can be a little bit hit and miss and... Uh, sometimes a little bit of experience is needed to be able to understand it in, in my view. So let's take this first one. 
fix the frames into the right pl places of the keel following the numbers control if they are perfect in line and glue them to the keel so the english isn't isn't the best but some people wouldn't actually know what a keel is so um it can be a little bit confusing but basically it's telling you to put the ribs in and make sure that they're square so you probably need a little bit of experience and uh before you tackle this kit it's sort of two or three kits in maybe um so yeah so we are doing uh it's a plank on frame so we're building up the frame to start with um then we are building up what looks like the transom is that not quite sure what's to say place the deck supports for the cabins right okay um right so it's this bit here so we're building up some internal structure um, and the false decks. Then we are putting our first planking on um, and some more structure. That's that little platform on the bow there, um, showing you the strips. Then we've got some, that looks like the whales and some decorative strips going on there. Those are the ones that in the picture are painted green, but you could paint them red or black or any colour you wanted, really, I guess. Then we've got a little sort of hut thing that goes at the front, a cover there. Um, some more decorative pieces. Um, and then we're on to putting the decals on now. I say decals, there's a little picture of them here. We'll, we'll talk about those in a minute, but actually they're not decals, they're dry rub. Um, so, yeah, so decoration for the stern there, and I know we've got decoration for the bow. You can see the cabins decorated and so on. Um, then we've got some pictures of frameworks that we have to make up. So we'll be cutting to length and putting the bevels on ourselves. Uh, then we've got a windlass, ladder, um, that's how to make up this little contraption here, whatever that is, some form of hatch cover. Um, then we are making up the three masts. So they will probably be to scale and you can put the mast on and make sure that you've got the thickness right. You can see there's a taper there. Um, and then there's another mast inside, so we're going to have to drill a hole and then it gets locked in with these little pegs, which locks that in place. Um, yeah, so that's interesting. We've got these little beads that go on. You can see them in the picture there. Um, and these little rods here are those. So you, there is some reference pictures. There's the flag, a close-up of the rigging, um, how to tie it down. And tie the yard arms off. Um, we've got the ladder rig in there, that's interesting. Looks like we've got quite an um, ornate little um, stand for it, which is nice. Um, and a ladder, uh, a ladder, sorry, an anchor. And how to rig up the little ship's boat that dangles off the back. And then on the back page, we've got uh, various different pictures um, about uh, rigging, tying off and blocks. So, so there's a stage by stage picture of tying off the um, uh, ropes there. Um, and we've got pictures showing tying off and locking blocks. Um, so lots of different approaches to tying off on these bailey pins here um, and on cleats and all the various different types of ways of fastening the ropes, depending on uh, the location of tying off. Um, and then it's showing you here these how these blocks are tied up. So you've got some with hooks, some with pegs, some that are just tied off, how to join a double block, all interesting handy stuff. Then we have a little separate instruction sheet which talks about how to put um, these, they refer to them as decals, but they're actually dry rub transfers. So you have to cut them out, 
and then you rub them with something like a round end, a, a blunt round end, and that detaches them from this um, uh, glossy, transparent paper and gets them onto the wood. Um, quite a bit of prep needed to make sure that you've not got any um, um, lines or unevenness that they, this breaks up to. So this will be trickier than it might first look. But we've got some nice, colourful designs there, should you want to use them. Then we have the plans, and um, it's a single uh, fold-out sheet. And if I try and get this into shop, what we've got is um, a full list of materials. Then we've got a list of the wooden pre-cut parts with all the numbers on so that you can uh, number them up ready for building um, and understanding them in the instructions. And then on this other side, we've got a picture of the completed model, profile shot of the ship, which gives you um, some nice information on the rigging positions. Um, and then we've got a deck view so um, and that also relates to the rigging positions as well as the positions of all the bits and pieces. So you've got the windlass there, for example, so you can check your orientation. But if you see, if we take that, for example, that Roman numeral 2 there, and it's pointing to that cleat, and we can use Roman numeral 2 there, so we know that that's that um, yard arm tie-off, and that that's going down to that cleat. And then we can use the picture on the back of the instructions to see how it's tied off on the cleat. So you cross-reference it all, pull it all together. Um, so uh, it's a very handy tool. And it's telling me that this um, is 1 100 scale. So this is the actual scale of your finished uh, model ship when it's done. Um, and then we've got um, a rear view of the ship there. Um, I'm not quite sure why, but it gives you a picture of the um, how to orientate the um, decorations and the, the dry rub transfers I get, I guess. And that is all you get in the way of instructions. So next is the sales, and what we get is we get some nice um, material here that it's not too white it's a sort of a creamy color which gives it a sort of age look i quite like that um, as you can see it's a little transparent but uh but that's fine uh, and what it shows you is the stitching points so you cut it out and then your wooden strips will go along those stitching points you can see they're only printed on one side and then you'll sew it in and uh it means that you make sure that all your little wooden beams will be in exactly the right place and it looks right. So, uh, yeah, really nice. So, we'll put that back. And that comes in a little case to make sure that it's all kept nice and protected and doesn't get damaged. Wood parts next. So, we've got some one millimeter ply, I'm guessing which has got some of these smaller parts that we've seen. So uh, that looks like the little platform at the bow, some of the um, decoration on the ship. Um, that looks like the frames for that little roofed area on the, on the front of the ship um, and some little beams. So that's that. It's all good quality. The lasering is okay. Just need a little bit of a rub on the surface to get rid of some of that scorch marks, but that's okay. On this piece, we've got false decks. Those are both deck areas um, and some more structural pieces. These look like the bases for the three masks to me. Um, and they are, um, I think, the same thickness. Yeah, same thickness of material, right? So why they've done two sheets, I'm not sure. Um, but that, again, is nicely lasered. Um, no hard work there. 
And then finally, for the pre-cut parts, we've got this sheet of four millimeter um, ply, which is primarily the frame. So we've got the, the keel there and the frames that we're gonna shove in there. Uh, and that's all very nicely done. There's no, uh, and it's gone all the way through. So that's a, that's a quality bit of lasering. We've also got the um, ends there for the, for the bases now. It's a little disappointing that that's in ply because it means you're going to have to paint these. Um, I mean, they're quite ornate with all the scrolls on and stuff, but you will see the laminations, um, so that's not attractive. So you're going to have to sand that really nice and smooth and then give it a paint, um, which is a little disappointing. It'd be nice if that was solid wood, in, in fairness. Uh, but um, as far as the parts go and what we need to build the ship, that all looks really nice. Uh, and easy to work with. So next we have the wood stock and the Matty are very good at doing this. Um, other companies should take note from this. They put little labels on some of them to tell you what they are. So this says deck planking. So that's what that is. And this one says hull planking. So we know that is for the hull. Um, then we've got Lots and lots of these little um, dowels, these little rods, and I suspect they're all for the um, sails. They're all the same length, so some of them might have to be cut a little bit shorter, um, but given how they look, I, I reckon they're for the sails. And then we have um, a pack with mixed lengths in. We've got um, strip and rod in there. Um, and what have we got? It's a bit difficult to see, but we've got one, two, three different colours in there, which means we've got three different types of wood. Um, so it looks like lime, maple, uh, yeah, definitely some walnut in there as well. So if you want to varnish it, you're going to have some different colours there to show off, which will be nice. Um, so quite a lot of strip there um, it's all nicely sewn nice and square there's no uh, no fraying you can tell it's uh, it's a good job I'm taped up at the end to keep it all in place so that's nice I don't know whether I didn't see whether it's single plate uh, planked or double planked um, Given the quality of this wood, I think this might be single plank, so um, a, a little bit trickier when planking the hull because you're going to have to do a good job right from the start. Um, but yeah, um, very nice bundle of wood that, all in good quality, all the same sort of colour. Sometimes you get some colour shift, but you can see there's some, but it's not massive, lighter and dark. Uh, and then the Deck planking is fraction thinner, but, but I mean, it doesn't tell me. It will do on the parts list. A fraction thinner, but you can see how we've got a colour contrast from the deck to the hull, so that'll look nice under varnish as well. So that's our uh, main wooden component. And what we get is two of these um, plastic trays. Uh, and you can see it's got this funny little thing at the bottom. Well, that's to allow the wood strip that we just looked at to sit in there um, nicely nestled in and then the plants can go on top and there won't be any harm to them um, and we have these little plastic lids so these are great these are really handy to be used afterwards and a matty i think assume that people are using them afterwards because they bother to put their logo on them and stuff so let's have a look at what we get in the first one so we've got our um, rigging threads there now Normally you get two different colours. Um, you get this sort of natural colour um, and you get black. Uh, now the black is to represent tarred, so your black is your standard rigging that doesn't move and then your natural rope coloured is your running rigging which does move. Um, so that suggests that all of this is running rigging uh, but I don't know whether the Chinese did tarring or not. So, um, But we appear to have three different thicknesses. What I can't see is anything telling me what they are? So we will have to work that out. But yeah, 
There we go, three of those. We have um, a little plastic nameplate that we can use. Um, looks a bit 70s, doesn't it? I think we'll uh, probably have to paint that up to improve it. Then we have a bag that has got the cannons. So we've got the current, the um, the trucks, which are moulded individually as uh, bronze parts. We've got the little cannons themselves, which are very nicely moulded. Hollow ends, again in bronze, so you could leave them like that if you wanted and paint the trucks um, a more wood colour. And then we've got lots of these little brass rings in there, which will be for rigging them, no doubt. We have a very small bag, actually, of uh, brass nails, which will uh, be used when we are putting the wood strips on the hull, for holding them in place. Um, these are dome headed so there is two different types you can get flat head as well usual that you see dome headed ones although i have had flat ones in the past then we've got some more brass rings some white metal cleats and then in this bag we've got some Odd looking uh, metal bent nails. You see that? Never seen those before, so I'm not quite sure what they are. And then some eye bolts, which are these brass, brass things here, which all seem to be the same size. And then lastly, in here, we've got this um, little sort of wooden roof for that. Um, that front structure which is seems to be mounted on some form of paper um, well that looks quite nice um, so I don't know whether we have to cut that to size or whether it's already cut to size um, yeah but glue that in place and probably fix it with a matte varnish or something that looks really nice so that is the first one done let's have a look at what's in the other one so in the second tray, we've got two bags with these pre-cut parts in them, uh, which I'm guessing is ladders. There's some planks there. Um, so whether these are cut into little squares that stick out from those, I don't know. We appear to have six in total. So there's plenty of ladders on the ship. So that's what those are. Then we've got two resin ships boats now these are a little bit rough around the edges as resin goes they're a bit uh they're not quite to a modern standard we've got the wooden planks scribed on but they're they're not very neat so i might be tempted to uh, line that with some thin wood strip and veneer it and, and make it look the part um Give that a nice sand, get it all nice and smooth, paint it up, that'll look really quite nice. And then that's the same idea, but smaller and to the same standard. You can feel it's lumpy, got some air bubbles in it. So, okay, just needs a bit of work, really. Um, next, we've got the blocks, and these are the only blocks in the kit, and they're all singles, so there's nothing difficult here. And when I say single blocks, that means they've just got that one hole in, so you've got one rope that goes through them um, and then one rope that's, that ties them off. So nice and easy, not complicated. A nice little touch is this little anchor pack here. So these have all been pre-cut and pre-drilled. So all you have to do is assemble them together, glue them into place, put your peg through the top and your ring on uh, and you're away, you've got your anchor made up. So nice and simple, a nice little touch. And the same is true of these parts here. So we've got the little balls that we saw on the masts already shaped for you. 
uh, and then these are the cat heads for the anchors um, so already with the cutouts in so they're just plug and play which is nice and then the last thing in the second tray is this bag which has the three windlasses in so you can see the barrels have already been shaped and drilled out um, we've got the end pieces that they mount in and then we'll cut these rods down to make the little handles that stick out and they should look pretty cool i reckon so there we have it amati's one to 100 scale chinese pirate ship what's my first impressions well i think this is a really nice model for someone who's perhaps done one or two simple kits and is ready to stride out a little bit more and um can read the instructions and understand what it is they're telling them because the instructions are a little bit gappy but the actual ship itself is quite simplified you've not got difficult curves at the bow that you've got to form um, nor have you at the stern so the most difficult bit being probably that, that green strip there that you're going to have to do a little bit of bending on um, you've got simplified rigging because you've got no rat lines at all um, so you've only got this working rigging on the block so um, and it shows you how to do those um, and most of the construction is square block squared off so um, I think an interesting project won't take too long to build should come together quite nicely the challenges are it's single planked so um, you need to have done a little bit of planking to be confident that you can do that and and make a good job of it um, otherwise i think that's going to be a fairly straightforward kit i also think it's quite eye-catching it's something a bit different to the spanish galleons and napoleonic warships um, uh, just something a little bit different um, it's got lots of decoration it's colorful and it's eye-catching the part quality is very, very good, and Amati have gone the extra mile and given you quite a few parts that are already pre-shaped, ready to assemble, such as the anchors and the windlasses and, and the ladders. Um, so, yeah, all in all, a very nice little kit, not a very heavy part count, not overly complex, a nice little project. Um, and I agree with what they say. If you uh, spend some time on making sure everything fits nice and tightly and, and what have you, it, it's a museum standard uh, kit. So, yeah, if you're looking for something a little bit different and you've dipped your toe in and now ready to stride out a little bit, so an early intermediate kit, I think this could be the one. I hope that was useful or interesting. Um, either way, you enjoy your modelling. Take care, everyone, and I will see you soon.